Hello everybody, Mr. Chandler here with my first video of the year for you guys uh, an AP Physics 1. We're going to talk about some definitions, some terms, some ideas that will be useful to us throughout the year. It'll be a short video, I hope. Uh, I tend to go on and on, but I'll do my best. Alright, so let's get right into it. Some of the ideas we're going to be talking about in this video are the idea of quantities versus units. Right? I need you to understand the difference here. It's kind of rudimentary, very foundational knowledge, but I want you, to, everyone, to understand what the difference is between these two things. So. What is a quantity? All right, quantity is literally anything that you can measure objectively. All right, objectively, objectively means not opinion, right? I measure the length of, you know, the thing to be 20 meters, and you measure 20. Okay, we agree, and that's objective. Not like, well, I'm going to measure the way I want to. You know, we all agree on how to do it, right? So, quantity is anything you can measure. Some things that are not quantities are like color, right? You can't have you know, how much blue is it? Well, it's just blue. Is it blue or it isn't blue? You, know, you can't have it be more blue. You know, it's a certain shade of blue, but you, know, you, get, you get what I'm saying. All right, so quantity is a thing you can measure objectively. And the units are the agreed upon standard quantity that we measure in, right? So if you are driving down, driving down the road and I say, hey, how fast you're going? You would tell me, oh, well, like a speedometer in your car, right? It'll tell you, oh, I'm going 25 miles per hour, right? Of course, if you're in physics class, you're gonna say meters per second not miles per hour, but whatever, right? But the point is that the units are kind of tied to the quantity. The quantity is your speed, how fast you're going, and the units are associated with that quantity would be miles per hour, or you know, if you live in Europe or someplace besides America, kilometers an hour, or you might even say meters a second if you're in a physics class. So there's a difference, right? Some examples of quantities we have in class will be like mass, uh, velocity, oops, can't write. You have to get used to my terrible handwriting. Sorry, speed. Uh, what else? You know, all kinds of momentum, acceleration, different stuff like that, right? Anything we can measure is a quantity. Okay, we get it. Now, within the category of quantity, things we can measure, there are two big subcategories of quantities. And the first one is a scalar quantity. A scalar quantity is a quantity that has only magnitude, no direction. So, some examples of this are temperature which we don't really talk about too much in um, physics class, but I'll mention it here. So temperature, okay, hey, may, uh, hey, how hot is it outside? Oh, it's 98 degrees Fahrenheit, right? You wouldn't give me a direction that wouldn't make any sense. Hey, hey, how hot is it? Oh, it's 98 degrees Fahrenheit south. Like, what, what do you mean it says no direction? So magnitude, let's talk about that word real quick, what that means, because some students get it confused. Uh, magnitude means an amount. Right? It's just an amount of something. It doesn't, you know, just how much. It's a number, right? In this case, the the magnitude, how much temperature is there? 98 degrees. What are the units for it? Well, it's Fahrenheit, right? I'm measuring it in Fahrenheit, degrees Fahrenheit. So there you go. I have my magnitude, how much? 98. What are my units? Degrees Fahrenheit. We're done. It's a scalar quantity. No direction. All you need is a number, right? So that magnitude is our fancy word for number or an amount of something, okay? A few of the examples would be like mass. Mass is also a scalar quantity. Mass we measure in kilograms. So a how much you know what's the what's the mass of that TV? Oh you know it's 12 kilograms, right? Kg for kilograms. There's the amount, the magnitude. There's the units, and we're done. No, no direction. You wouldn't say 12 kilograms southeast, right? That wouldn't make any sense. So there you go. Now the other kind of quantity we're going to have is a vector quantity. These have both magnitude and direction. Some examples of this are velocity or force. Velocity, I can say, okay, uh, hey, how fast are you going? Oh, I'm going 25 meters a second north. Well, that makes sense in this context because I'm moving in a northerly direction and I'm going at speed. So I have this magnitude of my velocity, the units associated with that magnitude, and then I have my direction, north, right? Which we all agree, you know, up on a map, right? Um, so there you go. So force could be another example. So force uh, would be an example of a vector quantity. How hard are you pushing that box? Oh, I'm pushing the box 30 newtons uh, at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal. Whoa, what's all that? All right, let's talk about what that means. Cause that's some terminology we'll need to see soon. What does that mean, 30 degrees above a horizontal? Well, you know horizontal means flat or horizontal line like this. So I draw a line like this. And 30 degrees above horizontal would mean literally that, right? It's above the horizontal. So here's my, I'm gonna draw the line. There's the vector. 
and then it's 30 degrees above the horizontal and then the angle it makes is the 30 degrees right so you see it's the line I'm drawing is above the horizontal we'll talk more about that in a minute but that's an example of what that might mean right? and there's a direction right it's going in that way at an angle right so these are all vectors magnitude the units associated with the magnitude and then the, the direction okay scalar vector all right moving on all right so let's talk about distance then distance versus displacement we're going to use both these terms distance is a, distance is a scalar unit it has meters are the units we measured in and when we talk about distance we add up every part of the journey let's give me give you both the definitions and i'll show you an example of what i mean when i say that so the difference between distance and displacement is that you'll see that displacement is a vector quantity also measured in meters but we only care about the length from when we started to where we finished so let me show you an example let's say you start off here and you go to the right and you go down and you go to the right some more and then you go down and then you go back to the left a little bit and you end right here on the X. Right? When it comes to talking about the displacement, the displacement for this movement, this object's traveling, uh, traveling uh, displacement will be from the start to the finish right here, right? And we don't care what we did in between. We're going to draw a straight line, right? from start to finish and that's the only line we care about we're gonna measure the length of that line and that would be our displacement right and we can also give an angle for it I might say you know let's say uh, 20 degrees below the horizontal this time right because we're going down from the horizontal but you know whatever whatever the direction is you, you get my point right displacement is from start to finish and we don't really care at all about what we did in the interim now when it comes to distance distance we do care about what we did in the interim so for distance what we have to do is we add up every part of the journey so see okay we went 10 meters to the right and then we went five meters down and then 10 more to the right and then two meters down and then five meters back to the left so we go 10 and we always just add we only ever add up for dis distance 10 plus 5 is 15 plus 10 is 25 plus 2 is 27 plus 3 is 32 right so this will be 32 total meters right I'm making numbers up to prove a point but the idea here is that for distance there is no direction because what direction would I give I went multiple directions I went to the right and then down and then right again and then down again and then left I can't give you one direction I changed it all the time so there is no direction but for displacement because I only went from start to finish right that's only that's only one line right that's one straight shot from start to finish so we can ass assign a direction to that because it's only the one, you know, one one line there. Okay, what that makes sense. So understand the difference between distance and displacement. So let's recap what we have so far. We got scalar quantities and vector quantities. The idea of a quantity and a unit, how they're tied together. And now we have distance and displacement. All right. Now when we represent vectors, we we're going to literally draw these on paper. We won't start doing it a lot, a lot until we talk about forces. But we'll do it a little bit when we talk about velocity and projectiles. So we want to get used to it. When we represent vector quantities like force, velocity, acceleration, etc., we are going to literally draw arrows to represent the vector quantities. So let's say you have an object. Here's the object. I'm going to draw a little circle. And it has a velocity of 20 meters a second to the east or to the right. All right. In order to represent that, I guess there's two ways we could do it. We could say 20 meters a second to the east, or E for east, or I might literally draw an arrow to the east right and then label it 20 meters a second right that's how we might represent that vector quantity with an arrow where right? the arrow shows the direction of course the arrow needs to be pointing in the correct direction east in this case being to the right um when i let's say i have another one i say uh i have five meters a second south when i draw that i'm going to draw my arrow going down and i'll label it five meters a second i don't have to write the s because the arrow is showing me you know south going down on the map right but notice the difference in the length of the arrow this arrow is very long compared to this arrow because it's shorter right this is only five this is 20 so of course 20 is bigger than five so the arrow should be longer so when you draw vector quantities the length of the arrow should correspond to the magnitude of that quantity longer arrow means bigger shorter arrow means smaller right 
and the direction is shown in the the way you draw the arrow, right? South, east, west, north, whatever, right? Angles too. All right, so that's how we represent the vectors. What about adding vectors? Can we add vectors? I'll give you an example. We can actually will be adding vectors a lot in this class, so it's something you need to be aware of. Let's say we I ask you, hey, uh, hey, so and so, what's three plus four? And you say, well, duh, John, it's seven, right? Like obviously, it's three plus four is seven. And I say, no, 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 no vector addition was three plus four and you say oh man uh, okay well I don't know I say what if what about three east plus four north what does that equal okay and you might say well what do you mean how can I add up directions well draw it out here's a vector going three to the east right four north all right so this is three to the east four north or up on a map how do we add those up the way we add vectors is we add them what's called tail to tip. All right, tail to tip. Got distracted there, sorry. So we add up vectors tail to tip. When I mean tail to tip, here's what I, here's what I mean. He, let's just draw a vector. It, whoops, easy, okay. So let's draw an arrow. The tail of the arrow, I sometimes call it the butt because you know, it's like the bottom of the arrow. This is the tail of the arrow. And the tip, like the arrowhead, is the tip of the arrow is here. So when we add two vectors together, we put the butt or the tail of one arrow and we touch it to the tip or the arrowhead of the other of the other arrow. So you see how the tail of the four vector is touching the tip of the arrowhead of the three vector, okay? And we stick them together like that. Important to note that we could also draw it this way. I could draw four here and then three this way. So long as it's tail to tip, it doesn't matter what order you draw it in, right? It doesn't make a difference. I'll get the same answer either way. But it's important to understand how to, to add them up. All, it's always tail to tip. You never want to draw them like this. You shouldn't ever have arrows like that. That's, that's tip to tip. That's, not, that's no good. And this here would be, you know, uh, tail to tail. And you wouldn't want to do that either, right? That's both wrong. That's not going to, that's going to get you the wrong answer, okay? So this is, this is no, this is a no. Don't draw like that. Always tail to tip, okay? So you can practice that. Now, when we add up the vectors, of course, what we get when we, what, what we get when we add up vectors is we get a sum, or what we call our fancy word for that is resultant vector. So what I what I the way I draw it, I draw from the very beginning of the arrow I drew first. So the three, the beginning, the, the butt or the tail of the three, to the tip of the arrowhead of the four, right? So from the very beginning, when I first started drawing the arrow, to the very end, at the end there. And this arrow is called the resultant resultant vector okay resultant vector and or not, or, or, we get to call it the sum right or the adding up of the vector so now three east four north and you say well how, so how do I do that well this makes a right triangle right so we what if we just did a squared plus b squared equals c squared remember the c represents the hypotenuse of the triangle this in other words in this case the hypotenuse of the triangle is that resultant vector the three and the four are the a and the b. So three squared plus four squared equals c squared. This of course is gonna be nine, that's 16, that's 25. And we square both sides and we get five. So it turns out if you do uh, vector addition for three plus four, three east, four north, you get five, not seven, right? So vector addition can be a little weird get us different answers sometimes, but that's how we're gonna to need to start thinking about things, especially when we start discussing velocity and motion in two dimensions, which we will do pretty soon. Okay, so I'm gonna, again, real quick also, you can add up more than two vectors. You could add up three, four, five, 100 vectors, doesn't matter. You just always keep doing it tail to tip. So there's a tip, put the tail on there like this, and I can just keep doing this. You know, for whatever the vectors were, I'm just drawing arrows here as an example, but that's how you do it, right? Put the tail of one arrow on the tip of the other arrow, and you just keep going, right? Most of the time, 99% of the time in this class, we're only ever gonna have to add up two vectors. I don't think there's much where we do more than two. Maybe three, but it's pretty rare. All right, so that's how you do vector addition. Well, let's do one more thing here, speed versus velocity. Real quick, speed is a scalar unit, uh, a scalar quantity, I should say. It's units or meters per second. And of course, you know what speed means, it's how fast you're going, right? Now, the difference here between speed and velocity is speed, velocity is the exact same thing as speed, except it's also what direction you're going in, right? In physics class, we're gonna talk about velocity pretty much exclusively. 
almost all the time. If even if I say speed, I probably mean velocity. Sometimes, sometimes I speak, I say speed by accident. I probably mean velocity though. So anyway, keep that in mind. Here are the units: meters per second. So how many meters are you going? So if you go five meters per second, what that means is you would start here. You go in one second later. Oh, I'm supposed to say seconds. Sorry, one second later. How far have you gone? You've gone five meters because you're going five meters every second, five meters per second. Two seconds later, you go 10 meters and so on, right? Very simple. All right, so that's speed and velocity and the difference there. We'll discuss this in more detail later. I just want to get the groundwork right now. And the last thing is accelerations. So the units for acceleration are kind of weird. They look different, look very strange to students who have never seen this before, but the units are meters per second squared. You could also write this as meters per second per second. So you might see this in some textbook. And I might write it this way sometimes too. But this this is the same thing as this, all right, mathematically speaking. Acceleration is a vector quantity, so it has direction. And it just means how much your velocity is changing, right? Are you speeding up, getting faster, are you slowing down, changing direction? How is your velocity changing? That's the definition of acceleration, right? All right, so that's going to wrap it up. Um, we talked about. So let's recap what I want you to get out of this video. Okay, so real quick, I want you to get out of it what is a quantity in a unit? What are the different types of quantities, scalar versus vectors? Um, there are know the difference between distance and displacement. Very important that you understand the difference there and how they're measured. Understand what a vector is, how we draw it. Understand how we add up vectors from tail to tip and how we can even find the resultant vector. It's an important term to know, resultant vector. And then lastly, uh, speed and velocity, right? What's the difference? Which one's scalar? Which one's velocity? Which one's vector? And acceleration, you know, what is that? It's a changing in velocity. Know their units. We'll give you more formulas, all the fancy hard stuff that comes later. For now, I just want you to know what these words mean. Okay, what do the words themselves mean? Okay. If you have any other questions, concerns, comments, please hit me up on Remind, email, text message, whatever it is. Talk to me in class if you have any questions. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.